It's award-winning, it's international, it has six-dimensional hop character. Today, we're drinking Jaipur. Hi guys, it's Jim here from drtankenstein.com with another episode of Beers of the British Isles. On today's episode, we have a special guest. Not only is she the only other person that lives at my address, she's the only other person that could drink as much as me, and she's the only person on the planet who I know loves this beer as much as it deserves. Today, we've got Sophie. Hello. Welcome, Sophie. You're the first other face ever to appear on this channel. I feel so privileged. So privileged. I also feel I've deserved it. I've drunk an awful lot of beer with you You've over drunk the an years. awful lot of beer. I feel like it's about my right more yeah. than anything And it else only took a global pandemic for me to <laughs> open up the channel. Uh, so today uh, we're drinking my an favorite. absolute monster from Thornbridge, Jaipur. Um, Sophie's favourite, as she already said. Absolutely. So Maybe we're coming into this a little bit biased. So Jaipur, you can get this absolutely everywhere. Um, we got this out of a four pack, uh, four for six, uh, and- uh, you Eight for nine. Eight for nine. In Tesco's. Um, you can also get them individually as well. So this is 5.9%, uh, 55 IBU. So that's pretty standard. You know, the, the gravity to alcohol ratio in this is about a one, which is which is good, maybe, maybe just under. Um, so we're expecting quite a punchy pale ale, India pale ale here, what do you think? I think it's gonna to have to be flavorful. It's gonna to have to at be At 5.9%, flavorful. it's got to be worth drinking. Yes, so to be an IPA at that strength, you really need a bit of malt backbone to back it up, to, to hide the alcohol, but you also need a hell of a lot of hops. Now this beer, like I said earlier, has six dimensional hop character, which I think means they use six different hops. So as I said, 5.9% alcohol, they need a lot of hops in there. The hops they use, they have all the C's, uh, Chinook, Cascade, Centennial, and Columbus. And they also use Artanum and Simcoe. Now, I know what they're Ooh. like. Woo! Yeah. Loads. A lot of hops. Now, I know what those guys are like, um, but for the sake of our guest, I have some examples. Now, it is lockdown, the shops are closed, but I do have some hops here, so. They are essentials, after all. They are essentials, after all. So, this is the first one, Cascade an absolute hero of a hop. Have you ever heard of Cascade before? I've heard of it in a couple of beers. Yeah. And you've never brewed before? I've never brewed before. So even Beer a number drinker, has heard of Cascade. Frequenter of shops that describe beers. So if you beers. just give that a little, a little look. So before we started filming, Sophie said, they all look the same, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you putting them all out individually? So Cascade, uh, a real kind of that's citrusy, not, grapefruity It's not kind too of strong smell. smelling. That's not as pungent as I was. Almost expecting it to be. Well, hold on a second. So Cascade is a real, just absolute legend of a hop. Like I say, uh, kind of gr on the grapefruity side, a citrus subtropical. I was thinking for saying subtropical. <laughs> well, yeah, go on. I make good viewing. Uh, we'll do the bloopers later where she's chewing hops. <laughs> so Cascade, nice and grapefruity, citrus aroma. Uh, not too bitter Cascade, so you can use a hell of a lot of it, get a lot of flavour out of it. That might be why you said it's not as... Uh, aromatic as you imagined. Mm. Um, so Simcoe, so Simcoe's a little bit more on the tropical side. I don't know if you agree. That's more Jaipur. Yeah, it's a that little. That is more Jaipur. It's a little bit more. I guess what you Pineapple. would call that. Yeah, yeah. A little bit more on the tropical side, um, but Simcoe packs quite a bittering punch. So uh, mm. you know you got to be careful with the amount that you put in there. But like I say, fifty-five IBUs. Just like pineapple. Just like pineapple. So Chinook is the real kind of um, the real kind of brawn in this series of three that I've got here. So Chinook isn't as aromatic, but I still love it for some reason. So just give that a give that a go. It's kind of like um, it's got that kind of tropical underbelly. That's almost grassy. Almost grassy, yeah. Um, That's got the scent of going for a walk in the woods yes. on a nice day. It's kind of earthy, right? Mm. So it's tr tropical and earthy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So there we go. So these are the hot characters. So what are you expecting from this beer, Sophie? 
I am expecting pure pleasure. I'm pure expecting pleasure. it to be cold. If it's not cold, you've missold it. Well, I will definitely do a temperature update in a second. <laughs> uh, so what I'm expecting from this beer, like I say, it's an IPA. It's very clearly an American IPA with all those American hops in there. Not only have we got the three that I mentioned, we've also got Columbus, Centennial, and Artanum as well. Uh, Artanum, I always think of Artanum as like Cascade's big brother. It's just a bit Cascade, but a little bit older, I guess. Um, so I'm expecting a very fruity aroma, almost a floral, but tropical taste. And because it's 55 IBUs, 5.9% alcohol. I'm not sure what I'm expecting in terms of bitterness. I imagine there's not gonna be that much residual sweetness in there. What do you think? I'm expecting, not to quote my catchphrase, but a super hoppy IPA. Super hoppy IPA. Full of well, IPA flavor. Full of IPA flavor. Let's find out what we've got. We're in the glass, we're poured in, and can I say that for the first time ever, Sophie poured it perfectly. When it counts. <laughs> when it counts, when it counts, when it's for TV, which this is. Um, so, first thing to note is the absolute crystal clarity of this beer. Crystal clear and a lovely, lovely uh, golden color. How would you describe that? It's, it's kind of a, even though it's clear, it's almost glowing, right? It's it's lovely. It's yellow. It's more yellow than amber. You think yellow than amber? It's okay. more yellow than amber. Right, so we've got yellow versus gold. We'll, um, we'll see in the comments who wins that one. Um, and I've apologized for the glasses before. The head was quite strong when I first poured it. It seems to have dissipated a little bit now. Not sure if that's a bad thing or not. Uh, carbonation seems fine. So. Remember those hops I showed you earlier? Mm -hmm. Let's just, Should before be. we uh, before we dive in, just give it a little sniff. It's almost, and it might be absolutely awful to say this on a beer video. Almost white wine -y. Whoa. In the smell. Okay, well white wine is actually a, um, a desirable characteristic of some hops. Nelson okay. Sauvan. Uh, okay, is that one of those in there? No, but no, we will skip no, it. No, it's that. not, <laughs> it's not. Uh, another brewery made Nelson Sauvan very famous, um, and that's, no, for its white wine character. White wine, yeah, it's not as pungent as I thought it would be. It's pungent only for negative stuff. No, I think, I think it, it, it's, it doesn't smell beery, which I think, I think it's a yeah. beer for non-beer drinkers in many ways. Yeah. There is nothing in the smell of this beer that makes me think of an old man's pub. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Although we've been to a few old man's pubs and had this beer. Oh, I still enjoy an yeah. old man's pub, but this is a beer for a different occasion. So I think that when people um, refer to that beery smell, it's almost a yeast character they're talking yeah. about. This being an American IPA, we'll have used an American yeast, which is okay. which are more cleanly fermented. So you don't get that kind of beery smell, I guess. All right, we've talked about that enough now. Let's uh, cheers. Uh, cheers. It is, it's, it's fizzy, it's well carbonated. It is well carbonated. Well carbonated. Do you think that's because it's the first time you ever poured a beer without throwing it in the glass? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so like you say, well carbonated, That's I, I believe that's true. Um, I'm gonna be honest, for an IPA, I'm not knocked back by the bitterness in it, considering it's 55 IBUs, I think. I would say it was a beer for those who enjoy a good lime and soda. Whoa. Like myself. I it's for, the, think it's for the adult soft drinkers, I would say. It's got that fizziness. It's quite sweet. It's really tropical and flavorful, but it's not overly sweet. It's got okay. that tartness to it. Thornbridge, I don't endorse that. Please still sponsor the show if you're interested. Um, <laughs> so, tropical, you, you mentioned tropical. Absolutely. But. Yes, and I agree. I agree. It's def definitely a tropical character. The bitterness actually sits on your tongue quite well, so it doesn't blow you back. It's not. It's not crisp. Uh, it's actually. 
I don't want to say it's a bit chewy, but I think it is. It's, it has actually got quite a residual sweetness and a, it's a bit it of a bready character. It is one of very few beers, I think, that's got a really good aftertaste. Mm. You will, an hour after be, after drinking a pint of Jaipur, still be enjoying that aftertaste yeah. rather than that sense of regret that you went too far with a 5.9% beer. So it clings, but in a good way, I think. Absolutely. Is that what we're trying to say? Yeah, creamy. It's almost creamy. Yeah. So looks great. Smells okay, tastes good, tastes even better after an hour, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. At the brewery that brewed this beer, we've, I've done, I've reviewed beers by them before, uh, but this is pure, full on, 100% Thornbridge. Uh, you've been to Thornbridge, haven't you, Seth? An absolutely wonderful day out for anyone who's ever lost anywhere near South Yorkshire. Yep, because you will get lost. It's based in Bakewell. It's the Riverside Brewery, based down in Bakewell. The home of the Bakewell pudding, but not the Bakewell tart. Do not get that confused. Yes. You get about as far as the industrial estate where you think you've taken a wrong turn and might be murdered at any point. Um, keep walking just that little step further. You'll come across a man selling bread through a window he does sell bread. inexplicably yeah explicably we're leaving that in is that because i've had <laughs> that's that's not because i've had a 5.9 yeah. percent beer this is a cambridge graduate ladies and gentlemen <laughs> uh it's been 15 minutes she's got it in <laughs> no so uh, the brewery based in bakewell they open their doors uh last weekend of every month so if you're ever near bakewell do it thornbridge are quite i love the story of thornbridge fantastic um, story it's a real fairy tale story yeah, of, is, well, is it a Sheffield? Is it a fairy, it's fairy a fairy tale, tale story for men. It's a fairy tale story until I realised that the guys that actually started the brewery were super rich already. I think if you can ignore that, following their dreams still. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm joking with that. It is. It's really good. It's a really cool story. Just two guys got together, wanted to make beer, and they basically made one of the best breweries out there, and stuck to their guns throughout the whole thing as well. Back in 2005, when they were founded, when this beer, Jaipur, was first brewed, uh, nobody else was doing this, in the UK at least. Uh, these guys decided, no, I, I, that's, this is what I want to do. And they stuck to their guns and they've, they've done it. And they just, they just keep winning awards. They can't stop winning awards. Um, Can we have a shout out as well to the brewers they employ? They are, I think, fantastic for employing... Uh, graduates of brewery from universities and nurturing people from the bottom up. So and I believe, think that yeah. that's huge. That's yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah giving people a chance. It's the only way you get something different. And this is certainly something very different to what the UK was producing before this came out. Yeah. Several years ago now. So, so do you remember your first Jaipur? I do remember my first Jaipur, and I'm glad you've brought that up. Okay. My first Jaipur, I did not enjoy. My first Jaipur was... You never told me that. Ordered as a pint by you, a full pint on cask, so full Jaipur. Jaipur on cask is a beautiful thing. In a Weatherspoons, but where else? <laughs> where else? <laughs> um, having made you wait, I think, for quite a long time. Um, in a pub in a district of Sheffield that you knew not for an inordinately long amount of time for me to finish my new job. Are you being very uh, cryptic here? I was... arrived oh, I say right, right. and you'd ordered me this full pint of Jaipur and he said, oh, I know beers and I know you and this will be the best beer you've ever drunk. You will love it. And I took two sips and thought, oh, I didn't enjoy it, to be honest with okay. you, it was too strong. It's very, very easy to be put off, I think, by the first two mouthfuls. So do you, th do you, think, you, do you think you can taste the alcohol in there? I don't think you can taste the alcohol as such. I think that it's if you're not used to the flavour and you're not expecting it, it's a very strong flavour to suddenly come to terms with. I think it's one of those beers that's a grower. Okay. And by grower, I don't mean you have to drink six cans of it and then all of a sudden you're drunk and you're enjoying it because it's 5.9%. What I mean is you will drink that first pint and then a day later you will be thinking, that was really tasty. Yeah. 
And it's what makes you, I would say it's one of the beers that made me become a beer drinker for pleasure rather than a drinker. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a great that's a great endorsement that I think. Um, yeah, I remember my first Jaipur. It was, I think back in 2011 in Vox Bar in Huddersfield. Hey guys. Um, yeah, and they had this, uh, they had this IPA on keg, it was, back, uh, it was on keg back then, and uh, I had a pint, and yeah, probably like you say, I, I was a bit kind of, uh, I didn't really, back then, I didn't really know what I was getting. It was very floral, but for some reason, I liked it for some reason, and I didn't know why. It's almost, I think, the cocktails of the beer world. You order a cocktail, you're not sure what you're getting, it arrives, and it's certainly very different to whatever the last drink you had was, but enjoyable. Yeah, you're making really you're enjoyable. making a lot of uh, analogies of that I don't analogies. think that people will understand. But uh, it's for yeah. the female audience. So Sophie, I got you on the show for two reasons. One is that most of my subscribers are male. Uh, the other is that you love Jai Pearl more than anyone else I know. I do. Indeed. So give me. About 10 words, why do you love Jaipur so much? About 10 words, now that is, it's a difficult one, you know how to ask a question, don't you? That's 15 words, guys. (laughs) Um, I think that Jaipur is a beer for those people who don't know that they like beer yet. But they probably do. Sure they do, everyone does. Let's wrap this up then. Sophie, we're coming to the end of the show and this is the bit where I wrap everything up, tie up all those loose ends. I've probably talked a lot of shit throughout the episode. Um, So this is what people wanna hear. So let's sum Jaipur up. So color, probably a a light straw color actually. Light straw? I would still say yellow. Yellow, okay. Carbonation is good. Very good. Well carbonated. Um, of course, out of a, if you're drinking out of a can, uh, carbonation's often very, very good. Um, carbonation's good. Um, the, the aroma. Not as strong as expected. Not as strong as expected at all, to be honest. And for an IPA, you really look for the aroma. So the aroma though, is when you look for it, it's, it's true. It is tropical. It's white winey. White winey. We have tropical and white winey. Uh, maybe I'm not as sensitive to that as you are. Uh, flavour? Creamy. It is creamy, isn't it? And I think that that creaminess is a soft bitterness coupled with um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of residual sweetness from the malt bill, probably. Absolutely. So yeah. it's, yeah, creamy is a good word for it, actually. Um, so, straw, tropical aroma that isn't as strong as you imagine, soft bitterness, creamy mouthfeel and flavor uh, with, I think we're gonna have to give a, a grapefruit flavor. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Pineapple, I'd add pineapple to the grapefruit Pineapple flavor. and grapefruit. Um, aftertaste, it just lingers, but in a good way. It lingers Long in a good way. Lasting is the word yeah. for the Jaipur aftertaste. Lingers in a good way. So I don't like to rate beers out of 10. Normally what I would do is I would say, if this beer were a song, it would be, but so if you're the Jaipur expert, I'm gonna hand this one over to, to me. you. If this beer were a song. To me. To you. <gasps> the pressure. It is quite a lot of pressure, so if you don't want to do it, that's fine. If this beer were a song, it would be? It would be my summer of 69. It oh, would okay. be, it would be the beer that makes you happy. One of 69 people. It makes you right. think yeah. of a summer's that's day. Awesome. It makes you that little bit, not too merry, but just merry enough. You can't help but smile when you're drinking a pint of Jaipur. Okay. Or a small glass. Summer of 69 by Brian Adams. 
Brian Adams, I believe. What, what okay, would yeah. you have said out of curiosity, Dr. Tankenstein? I have a few. Um, for, th- for this beer, this beer for some reason in my mind, I would say if this beer were a song, it would be Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. And why? Because, first of all, it's groundbreaking. Yellow. Rolling Stones, I think everyone would agree, were kind of a groundbreaking brand, <laughs> yeah. It's yellow, just like Keith Richards. Um, and I don't know. It's, Burn, cut. <laughs> it's, it's got that, you know, Painted Black's kind of got those odd tones in it, which are kind of like Indian feel, you know, Jaipur, sounds like an Indian word. Jaipur. Um, and Painted Black is definitely one of those songs, again, where it makes you want to dance. Okay. And believe me, you have a few Jaipurs, you're going to be dancing. So that would be my, uh, that would be my song. But we're going to go for this one. We're going to go with Summer of 69 by Brian Adams. Uh, leave leave a comment in the comments on the video. Let us know what yours would have yeah. been. Have four jipers and let us know. Of course. At least four. <laughs> <laughs> it well, is eight for nine pounds in Tesco. Though. This is a great beer, guys. Head down to anywhere, basically. Pick this beer up. Um, and if you do like it, take the can down to your local bottle shop. They'll definitely have jipers on offer. But pick something else. They'll have a, there are a lot of beers out there that are Jaipur esque. Pick one of those. Let us know what you think. Can we also perhaps mention the fact that if you are a Jaipur fan, if you do like super hoppy IPAs, and you are ever in the north of England, uh, the Thornbridge Brewery tour is an absolute must. It is fantastic. The Thornbridge beers are so similar they have a target market i think in a lot of instances there are obviously some there's some for everyone but if you're a fan of jaipur there are many 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 beers that you'll be able to get on tap at Thumbridge they sure brewery. are that's a good that's a good endorsement actually a good a good plug if you love jaipur get down to the brewery in the meantime guys cheers, cheers. <laughs> Thank you.